Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to discuss about the most popular and the leading tool of the industry right now, that is Terraform. Whether you are using the AWS Cloud or Azure Cloud or GCP or any other, you might dealing with Terraform or you may need to upscale to Terraform in the future. So in this video series, I am going to explain each and every detail about Terraform which you need to know when you are working in an MNC. So so if you are looking for a video in which you want to learn how an MNC organization actually work with Terraform, then you are at the right place. So without further delay, let's start it. So as I said earlier, in this video series, you are going to learn about each and every detail of Terraform, which is actually used in an MNC organization. So we need to learn some theoretical point as well to actually understand the Terraform. So we quickly covered these theoretical points in first few videos and later we discuss the practical implementation of Terraform by using the proper pipelines and how actually it works in an organization. We will see all of them. So basically Terraform is an infrastructure as a code software tool or IAC tool. We will learn about infrastructure as a code later in this video that what is infrastructure as a code, why we need them and its users and what best practices we should follow as it is important to understand infrastructure as a code before we understand the Terraform. So that's why I include a brief introduction of infrastructure as a code. So what Terraform does, it provides you a command line interface which you can interact with hundreds of cloud provider services with any of the cloud provider, whether it is AWS, Azure or any other you can interact with every major cloud provider service. Also, it is an open source and it is created by HashiCorp company. So you might be wondering what is this infrastructure as a code? So let's first understand that. So here infrastructure means your server, database and any other network components or any of the resources which you are using as your IT setup. So whatever you create in your IT setup, it is known as IT infrastructure or generally in the IT world we call this at infrastructure only. Even if you create a single file in your Windows system, that is also a creation of an infrastructure. So mostly people don't consider that infrastructure, but it does and Terraform can create it. That's why it is an infrastructure as a code tool. So what IAC tool does, it describes our IT infrastructure as a code. So let's see this in more detail. So before we understand why we need infrastructure as a code, we need to understand the traditional approach towards our IT infrastructure. So earlier in the legacy time, MNC organization used to have their big data centers where they actually use the physical components, physical machines, physical databases to store their data. But with the advancement of cloud technologies, organization doesn't need to buy any physical component. They can use a cloud provider which are offering these component as pay per use basis. So now we are understanding even organization move towards the cloud computing, then what exactly is the need which led to the popularity of IAC tools. So the biggest disadvantage of the traditional approach of building the infrastructure is that there is no traceability and the rewards. So if some junior member of your team have deleted your environment or one of your component, or suppose let's take an example of ECT. So if someone had deleted that, then there is a no trace of that EC2. Of course, you can see that in the monitoring tools, but you can't see the full details of the EC2 which he has deleted. So I want a blueprint that contains all the details of that EC2 so that I can create it again. Even in the case of misconfiguration, just like I put a wrong detail there in the infrastructure, then I need to create it from a very scratch. So I want a blueprint or resource which we want to create or manage. Second issue with the traditional approach is human error. So suppose you member come in your team whose task is to create EC2 instances for the prod and non-prod environment. So you give him the very least privileges uh, through the IAM console. You give him the, the permission of creating EC2 instance and you also restrict it to create only T2 micro instances. So you give him a very least privileges and then you give him a task to create an EC2 instance for a non prod environment. But by mistake, uh, while creating the EC2 instance, he attached the prod VPC to it. So there is no approval stage before he provision that infrastructure. So with the legacy approach, there is more chances of human error. Next issue is slow development. So let's take the same example. However, along with the EC2 creation, we need to create an ALB also and uh, an API gateway also. So for to creation of EC2 instance, I need to go to the EC2 console and I have to create that. 
and for the ALB creation, I need to go to ALB console and create that. And for the creation of API gateway, I need to go to the API gateway console. So you can see I have to move to different consoles, which is a very hectic process. And again, there is a chance of human error. So I need a centralized place where I can manage all the things at a single place, which is not possible in the case of traditional approach. So next issue is limited automation. So with the evolution of cloud computing, there were some automation available, but you can't put all the logical condition which you can think. With the help of code, you can put all of that. So that's why IZ tools want to overcome these challenges by taking the advantages of code. So in the code, you can put conditions like if, while loop and you can put any logical condition which you can think of so these are the disadvantage of traditional approach which led to the need of the iac tools